just when you thought that C couldn't get any more complicated, along comes pointer arithmetic. In this video, I'll explain everything you need to know about pointer arithmetic, what it is, what it does, how to use it. Okay, so let's get started. What is pointer arithmetic? Pointer arithmetic, which is also called address arithmetic, describes the process of moving through your computer's memory by adding or subtracting numbers to go from one memory location to another. Now, in many languages, you may never explicitly use pointer arithmetic because pointer arithmetic is a low-level operation which can cause big problems if you get it wrong. And so, most programming languages provide higher level and safer ways of dealing with memory. But in C, pointer arithmetic is used all the time and you really do need to understand it. Right, let's see a simple example. Here I have an array of six integers and I have two pointers down here, array PTR and P, and I set them both to point to the start of the array. That is the values of these pointer variables and now the address of the array, which is also the address of the first element of the array, which here is the integer 11. And I now start incrementing the value of the pointer P. I add one with this syntax, another one with this syntax, and then another two. So I've incremented the value of P by four. Let's run this and see what I get. Okay, so the array PTR pointer stores the address of the first element. This syntax lets me dereference the pointer. In other words, it lets me get at the value stored at the address that's pointed to. Here, that's the first element, 11. The value of P, that's the address stored by the pointer P, was incremented by four, so it moved four elements along the array to the fifth element, and the value stored there is 51, and I can get that value either by dereferencing the pointer P or by using the standard array syntax A and putting four inside square brackets. Now, it's important to realize that when you add one to the value of a pointer, you are not necessarily adding the integer value one. What you are doing is that you are adding one of something. Or anyway, you're adding enough space to hold one of something. It could be one integer, one character, one floating point number, or one struct, for example. Here, a 32-bit integer takes up four bytes. So when I add one to a pointer that has been declared to point to an integer, like my pointer P, I'm really adding four bytes, one integer's worth. And when I increment an int pointer by one, I'm actually adding four to it. So that in effect, this lets me count four bytes along in memory. Notice, by the way, that the array indexing syntax is really just another way of doing pointer arithmetic. A, with four in square brackets, counts through memory from the array address itself for four integers worth of memory, because the array is declared and initialized as an array of ints. So A, with four in square brackets, counts along through memory four times four bytes. Now, this is an important thing to understand. Arrays in C all boil down to pointer arithmetic. A pair of square brackets is really a binary operator that takes an address, for example, the base address of an array, and an index at which specific data items are stored. Pointer arithmetic is then used to calculate the correct offset, that is the index, from the array address. An offset is just a number of bytes further along in memory, sufficient to store data of a specified type and the square bracket syntax is no more than syntactic sugar. It gives you a quick way of doing pointer arithmetic, nothing more than that. Once you've understood this, well, you've pretty much understood C. But if you find this is confusing, and to be honest, we all do at first, well, you may want to watch two other videos I made that explain arrays, pointers, and addresses in far more detail. The links are under this video. To clarify the relationship between array indexing and pointer arithmetic, let's look at another example. Here I point P to the address of the array A. Then, as before, I increment P by 1, then 1 again, and finally by 2. Then I show the value of the pointer in both hexadecimal and decimal. 
and then I show the value of the data item at each address. Let's run this and see what happens. Move this slightly out of the way. Okay, so you, you can see here that I've navigated the array to display the first, second, third, and fifth items. And here are the integers. The address of the first item is the same as the address of the array. As I said, I've shown addresses in both hexadecimal and decimal. While it's normal to show addresses in hexadecimal, sometimes it's easier to count the difference between two addresses in decimal. As you can see here, each time I increment P, I add on four bytes. That's the number of bytes needed to store an int. And here I increment by two, that's eight bytes, to move straight to the fifth element. OK, but how about some pointer arithmetic with a more complicated type, such as a user-defined struct? Well, let's turn to an example of that. This is the struct definition. It's a struct that contains four fields, an int, a double, another int, and a long, long int. Now, although it's possible to figure out how much memory is required for the fields of that struct, due to the way that the data is stored or aligned in memory, adding up the data sizes won't necessarily give you the correct amount of memory. I won't go into that in detail here, but suffice to say that when fields of different sizes follow one another, sometimes they're padded out with extra memory. In fact, because of the way the fields are ordered in this struct, the count of their sizes, which is 24, is different from the actual struct size, which is 32. And that's why down here, if I go down to this example of a function, I use the size of operator to calculate the amount of memory needed to store a single struct. Notice that I am not using a formally declared array. Instead, I'm allocating memory sufficient for count number of my structs and count I've just defined, hash defined up here, so that's four. So I've allocated enough memory for four structs. Now I have a pointer p to a my struct struct and I add and initialize some structs at various addresses in this for loop. I do that by indexing to memory from the base address at p0, that's the index zero, to addresses given at offsets as i is incremented. Remember that when i is i plus 1, p at index i will be the number of bytes further along in memory needed to hold one my struct's worth of data. So even though I have never declared an array, I now in effect have a four element array of my struct structs, with the array address given by p, which points to the first element of that array. I'm going to be doing some operations with P shortly, so I set two other pointers to point to the base address to Q and array add. Now, first I just print all the values of the fields of element zero, that is, the values I can obtain from the base address, and then I show the addresses of each field. Let me just get this up and running, and you can see that's what I've done here. Now I use pointer arithmetic to add three, which, due to the way that pointer arithmetic works, will be multiplied by the size of a struct. The size of a struct is 32 bytes, and you can see that here. Then I move one struct at a time using pointer arithmetic. I actually move, of course, 32 bytes at a time. Then I move along two structs by adding two to my pointer, two times 32 is 64, and so I move 64 bytes in memory. Here, I am still using pointer arithmetic, and as expected, the address of each element is 32 bytes higher than the address of the preceding element. And just to prove that the array indexing syntax performs the same function as pointer addition, here I navigate through the sequential structs using this array syntax. And, as you can see, the results are exactly the same. And I can similarly get at the fields of a specified struct, also using array indexing with square brackets, which I've done here with the item at index 3. So, in short, I hope that helps you understand the fundamentals of pointer or address arithmetic. I hope it also gives you an insight into something I've talked about quite a bit in other videos, namely, arrays in C are just addresses. An array is an address that indicates the location where some data items are stored. When you initialize an array, you are, in essence, doing no more than I did when I used calloc to allocate a chunk of memory. A chunk of memory sufficient in that case for a certain number of specific data items, while similarly array access using square bracket notation 
is just a shorthand way of doing address arithmetic. If you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel and click the bell to be notified whenever I upload new videos.